Outfit Fam. It is Saturday. It is 8 a.m. It's dark. I'm tired, but we're here. We are here, and I'm going to show you a couple different things. Like, we're going to go over something new this morning, so I hope that's okay with you. So, a lot of people think you need fancy equipment, you need to spend a lot of time, and you can't get a great workout from home. I'm not saying these things. Other people are saying those things. I don't believe any of it. I think it's just an excuse. And I think it's also just the lack of not knowing what to do, right? If we don't know, we can't get mad at ourselves for not knowing. So I'm going to give you five essential exercises that you can do right now at home with no equipment necessary. We don't need fancy equipment. God gave us the best exercise machine possible. We're living in it, baby. Our body is our best exercise equipment. Our best exercise buddy is our body, okay? So five essential exercises that you can do right now from home with no equipment necessary that will guarantee you results. Now, there's gonna, there, I'm gonna show you a couple of them, but there are a million different ways that we can program and change the intensity and change the progression and make the exercise more intense, right? We can do a lot with these exercises. So I'm gonna just give you the bare bones of each of the five essential exercises, and then I'm gonna walk you through the keys to how you will be successful utilizing these five body weight exercises right from the comfort of your own home. All right, guys, so the first one, our big rock mover, the squat, okay? So that one is such a great exercise. We can do it anywhere. And there are so many different variations of the squat. So I'm gonna go over the bare bone basic setup of a squat with you so that you feel comfortable and confident that you can do this at home. So all you need is a little bit of space, maybe grab a chair so that you can make sure that you're going down the depth of your squat is, is proper, right? So we wanna make sure that we're hitting a proper depth for our squat. So first things first, guys, we wanna make sure that we um, set ourselves up for success. All right, so two things I wanna go over with you. Toes can be either straight out in front of you and your the width of your feet, it doesn't matter. Honestly, to me, it doesn't matter. It's gonna matter for you based on your body. So if you're tall, you might have to have a wider stance. If you're short, your stance might be narrow. It just depends. It just depends on your body and what feels good for you. So figure out what stance feels good for you. And I'm sorry, I feel like I have a, a little hair. Oh, I do. Oh, don't you just hate that when you have like a little hair somewhere um, in your clothes? Okay, anyway, squirrel. All right, so you've picked your stance. You figured out what your stance is for your squat. So your toes are either gonna go straight, okay? Or your toes can be pointed outward just a little bit. So I, we don't want, we don't wanna be like this. We can point the toes out just a little bit, okay? So wherever the knees or the toes go, the knees go. So that's the second thing. So whether you pick forward, that's totally fine as long as your knees then go forward, okay? If you picked toes out, knees need to follow those toes. Okay, alrighty, so the next thing, I wanna make sure that you feel comfortable and confident doing this exercise at home on your own. Only go down, guys, only sit down as far as you can go comfortably that you can pick yourself back up. So ideally, we wanna sit about here, right? So my quad, this muscle here, is in line or parallel with my knee in the floor and my back is nice and flat, okay? That's an ideal in a perfect world squat. Now, if we can't get there, that's okay. We work, we work on it, we work on it. And before you know it, you might go even lower and you might feel comfortable doing that, okay? We just wanna make sure toes and knees are in line with one another. You go down as far as you can comfortably that you can pick yourself back up. Now, when you stand back up, you're just locking your hips in place. Anyone remember connects or Legos, right? You put the piece in a certain spot. 
and it fits. It, it snaps, right? So we want to think about that here. So we want our hips to snap into place, okay? We're not overly putting pressure on that joint. We're just standing up, squeezing the glutes, pushing the hips forward. Back should be nice and flat because remember, whether we're doing this at home or we're doing this with load at the gym, form should always count. Doesn't really matter about the weight we're moving unless it, we're doing with proper form. So you wanna lock those hips at the top, okay? Hands can be down at your side. Maybe you're holding something, right? Maybe you're holding dumbbells or grocery bags or something, but your hands can be down at your side. Your hands can be here doing a goblet squat. We could even be doing an overhead squat. That was a horrible overhead squat. My range of motion overhead is not so good, but you know what I'm saying. So the way that you hold your hands is gonna depend on where do you want the load to be, right? When you decide to add that. So that's our squat. Any questions or concerns about that one? But if you get that one and you understand how to squat, baby girl, you are golden. Or my guy, you are golden, okay? So that's the first one. We wanna make sure that we have a solid foundation when it comes to that. One more thing, I forgot. Your feet, your feet. So many athletes have been coached and so many people have been coached by trainers or coaches or whoever to only put weight in your heel. There's a couple things wrong with that. So if I have weight on my back and I only have weight on my heel, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall backwards. If I were to fail, I'm gonna fall backwards. Or they say only put weight in your toes. Well, I'm gonna fall forward. So clearly, placing weight in one part of the foot doesn't work. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna displace your weight throughout the whole foot. Yes, we're gonna put weight in our toes and in our heel. So we wanna think about how can we evenly put our weight on our feet? Imagine that, right? So we wanna put pressure on our big toe push it down, and we also wanna put pressure on our little toe, our pinky toe, and push it down. And then we also wanna put pressure in our heel. So the foot is made to sprawl out. The foot is meant to be flat, okay? So the foot is meant to be flat. So we wanna make sure that we're putting pressure through all of the four corners, three, however you look at your foot, either as a foot tripod or like Adrian from Yoga with Adrian, she looks at it as four corners of the feet. So however you look at it, we just wanna make sure that we're displacing our weight evenly on our feet, okay? Through the toes and through the heel. Awesome, all right. The next one, a glute bridge. So you guys, you wanna build a booty at home, but you don't have a hip thruster machine. You don't have booty bands, or you don't have access to dumbbells. You can do glute bridges and you're gonna work those glute muscles. So, how we're gonna set this up, okay? So, you're gonna lie on your back. Knees are gonna be bent. Feet, however close your feet are to your butt, one is gonna be range of motion and how comfortable it feels for you, but also, the closer your feet are to your butt, the more you might feel it in your quads. So we're gonna play around with that, okay? So if you do feel it more in your quads than your hamstrings and your glutes, you're gonna to wanna to try and maybe pick your toes up and press more into your heels, okay? All right, so we're gonna tuck the pelvis under us, okay? So if you don't know what that means, it's kinda of like pulling the Rolodex back. We're not opening the Rolodex, we're closing it. So we're tilting the hips down, pushing the belly button deep into the ground. And then what we wanna do from here either toes up or toes down, that's up to you. You're going to slowly and carefully pick your hips up. So we want the knees, the hips, and the shoulders to be in a nice straight line. We're picking those hips up. You're gonna squeeze your glutes, and we wanna make sure that we're not arching through the lower back. We wanna keep this nice and flat, okay? Squeeze the glutes, and then bring those hips back down. Now every time you set your hips down, if they roll and you can put your hand underneath that space in your lower back, you wanna reset, tuck your hips, and then pick them up, 
okay? Just like that. So this is an essential exercise because again, you can do this anywhere and the variations of this exercise are almost endless. We can do single leg, we can do marches, we can do holds, we can do abduction, we can add mini bands, we can add on something so we can put our feet up onto something to increase the intensity. We can um, do single leg in that increased intensity movement. So there's so many ways in which we can change this exercise to help you see the results that you want. So that's your glute bridge, okay? So our first essential exercise was a squat. The second one is a glute bridge. All right, guys, the next one, chest. We wanna work our chest, our shoulders, our arms. We wanna have that nice, sexy upper body, right? Well, an essential exercise that you can do at home with no equipment, that you don't have to purchase anything, is a push-up. Now, I am not a trainer who believes that everyone should just have this innate ability to move their body because I feel like that's kind of that's kind of rude and disrespectful. Not everyone lives the same life. So the way that I live my life is not the way that everyone else lives their life. So we have to recognize that not everyone's going to find a push-up to be easy. I don't find doing a push-up easy. Push-ups are hard. And so what we need to do is we need to find an appropriate modification to match your activity level now. And a great way to do that and a great place to start is to do an incline, a version of an incline push-up. A wall push-up would be a great place for you to start. A countertop push-up would be another great place for you to start. And then slowly working our way back down to the floor. It's gonna take time, it's gonna take repetition, it's gonna take consistency of you doing this exercise over and over and over again for us to see improvement. Now you might think, if I only do five exercises, I'm gonna get really bored. But you know what, I probably use all five of these exercises in all of my clients' programming in some form or fashion. Remember I said that there's a lot of ways that I can change these exercises based on the tempo, based on the direction, based on the speed, like, well, tempo and speed, but based on the, um, you know, how frequent are we doing these? Are we doing these for sets of three and 10? Or are we doing these for sets of two and 15? All of that matters, right? Um, so anyway, so push up. So I'll show you a quick modified, the girl, like, and I hate this, the name of this, please stop calling it a girly push up, okay? Please stop calling it that. We need to stop identifying inanimate objects as gender, right? Because a push up doesn't have a gender. I don't remember the last time a push up had a gender. It all just depends on your athletic and, and physical ability, right? So it has nothing to do with your gender. So let's, let's end that use of that word right now and today. Cool? Are you in agreement with me? I knew that you would. Awesome. Alrighty, so a, a modified push-up on your knees on the ground. Now this might not necessarily be your first starting position for this movement. We might need to start in an incline on the wall. Alrighty, so you're gonna be on your knees. Knee legs can be crisscrossed, it's okay. They don't have to be or they can be open, that's fine. So we always wanna think about wrist underneath our shoulders. We wanna think about pulling the shoulder blades back and down. And we wanna think about pushing our hips forward. So the cues that I'm giving you for this modified version, go for any modified version or the full push up. So shoulder blades back and down, wrist underneath your shoulders, push your hips forward, core nice and tight. All of those will pass for each variation of a push up. Alrighty, from here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lower yourself down as far as you can comfortably, that you can pick yourself back up. So drive the elbows back and then pick yourself up. There you go, right? So that's the push up. That's one variation of a push up. Again, once we master that, we can do a lot of other amazing exercises with that. So again, these are the building blocks to what our exercise program should be and what we can do at home. The next one is a step up. So you don't need a fancy step. 
I bet you have steps at home and you can do this at home. Or I bet your development or community has a, uh, has a park and has a playground. Well, there's steps to get up to the slide. So we have to sometimes think outside the box, right? Maybe you have a step stool ladder. Now also make sure that you are being very careful and very safe, okay? Since you're not in a, uh, in a gym, sometimes we can injure ourselves at home because we're, being, uh, we're trying to utilize what we have. So just make sure that whatever you're doing, you're being safe when you're doing it. Alrighty, so a step up. So there are multiple ways that we can do a step up. Here, I'm gonna turn this this way. So we can do a regular step up. So I think my head's gonna get cut off here in a second and then back down, right? So we can do one with weights. We can do it very slowly, right? We can also change the position of where my foot is pointing, right? So now I'm doing a side step, right? So that's gonna change how and what muscles are being activated, right? We're still working the quad muscles, but the side is going to cause a different stress on the body. So a step up. Again, you can use stairs, you can use a stool, you can use your couch or a coffee table if it allows. You can go outside. So there are many different ways that we can utilize this and it's gonna target our quad muscles. It's gonna target the inner and outer thigh. It's gonna work where we need it to work. So this is a great um, basic exercise. And when I say basic, I just mean it's an essential. It's an essential. Alrighty, whoops. My ring light is telling me that it wants me to be done. <laughs> so hold on. Hold on. That just gets super hot. Empty room can be so loud. It's drowning them out, so hold on. Oh, we have light. It was the Jonas Brothers? That's what did it. All right, so we went over a step up. All right, and the last essential exercise that you can do at home anywhere to be successful along your health and fitness journey is a plank. Is any variation of a plank, a side plank, a front plank, a modified plank, a plank on your knees, a plank on your hands, a plank, um, a tall plank, a side plank on the side, right? There's so many different variations of a plank, a plank drag. Um, there's so many different variations of a plank. And I'm gonna use ab work on the same thing because working your abs are important. I think they're not as important as some people think to in, in order for you to see visible abs, you need to do a million different types of ab work exercises. However, what I'm saying is the ab area, our abdominals, our muscles that are like anything else that need to be worked on a consistent and um, you know, regular basis in order to see those results. So doing crunches once is not gonna get us the results that we want. So a plank, just bare bones, basic cues of a plank that can be utilized in anything, in any variation of a plank. The cues that I'm gonna give you can be moved throughout any variation, okay? So I'm gonna show you a tall plank. So a tall plank for me, for my business, for my personal experience, means we're gonna be on our hands, our arms are gonna be fully extended and we're gonna be on our toes. So you wanna think about your wrist gonna be underneath your shoulder, okay? And you're reaching back with your heels. You're pushing your hips forward and you're squeezing your glutes. We do that so that we make sure that the lower back cannot arch or sink down, okay? Alrighty. So um, my wrists are underneath my shoulders I'm gonna pick myself up. I'm gonna reach back with my heels. I'm gonna pull my shoulder blades back and down and I'm gonna squeeze my glutes and push my hips forward. So this is a, a, a tall plank. In my opinion, you could do a modified tall plank where you're on your knees, you're still pushing your hips forward, you're pulling the shoulder blades back. You could do a low plank in a modified position. So you replace where your hands are with your elbows. 
Pull the shoulder blades back and down. Squeeze the glutes, push the hips forward. You could be in a low plank. So there's so many different variations of the plank and I just showed you a couple today. And then again, ab work. So um, dead bugs, um, twists, rotations, slides. Uh, plank is a great ab exercise because we are isolating, well, we're, iso we're doing an isometric hold where we're not moving the muscle. The, m the muscle isn't moving through a contraction, but it is contracting. Um, so that's a great exercise for us. So let me go over the five essential exercises that you need that you can do anywhere from home, at the gym, on the go, that are essential in your workout program that are gonna help guarantee you your results. So the first one is a squat, okay? We went over how to set our squat up, the important cues to think about when we're doing that movement. Glute bridges, okay, for our glutes, for our butt, for the big booty that we wanna build, okay, right? Push-ups, we went over the different variations of a push-up and where to start, okay? The cues for a perfect push-up. Step-ups, this one is, you know, another one that we can do basically anywhere. The equipment just kind of is there um, that we can utilize to our advantage and we can play around with the different variations of a step-up that are gonna help us move our progress forward. And then last, but definitely not least, please don't think these are in any order of importance, plank and ab work, okay? Those are the five essential exercises that you need for your result success at home. And here guys, here's the magic key. Here's the magic key, okay? So go get a piece of paper and you're gonna wanna write this down, okay? So the key, to your success. Yes, you need to utilize those exercises, but here's the here's the thing. Those exercises don't matter if you're not doing them properly or we're not programming them properly. <gasps> I know personal trainers and other coaches online would not want me to share that with you, but I just did, okay? So here are the keys. Consistency, okay? Load or time under tension, okay? Progression, we need to make sure that we are creating an appropriate progression of that exercise so that you can see strength gains, so that we can see changing of our body composition, right? We can't just do random exercises, we're gonna get random results. And last but not least, guys, don't tell anyone that I told you this. Last but not least, guys, you have to make it a part of your routine, like every day or the majority of your week, right? We have to make this part of our routine. You have to have fun. You have to enjoy what you're doing with with some you know with, with room to reason right it has to be fun it has to be something that you enjoy doing because if you continue to try and work in a in a place or you're pushing things or ideals on your body that you just hate first off you're going to be resentful you're not going to want to go to that workout class you're not going to want to work with your trainer you're just not going to want to do those things because it doesn't fuel you right? You, or you don't understand, why am I supposed to do this? It doesn't feel good for me, right? So you have to make it fun. Guys, I give you these exercises for free and I love doing it. And I also want to share with you that they don't mean anything unless you have, unless you're doing them. Exercises are free Workouts are free. That doesn't mean anything. What means something is, are you doing it? And who's holding you accountable? Because a lot of times that's where, that's the downfall. And again, those exercises, they're free. But your knowledge and understanding of why they're important for my success, how do I keep consistent? How do I increase time under tension? How do I increase and progress? You don't know that. Maybe you do, but I know that. And that's why you still need a coach, maybe me, or someone else to help guide you on this journey. So if that's you, 
If you're like, yeah, I got all these exercises, I just don't know what the heck to do with them. I do, and I would love to help you. And that's what I do. So I wanna share this with you. I have two really great options, or well, I have two really great options for you. If you're in the Frederick or Hagerstown area in the state of Maryland, I would love to work out with you in person. We can train in person. I have a spot in both locations that we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. Or we can do online, and that's open to anyone in the state of Maryland or world nationwide, right? I can work with you online as well. So if that's something that you want, you need that person that's gonna help walk you through a designed program for you. And all of this, all of this is figured out for you. I'm your girl and I'd love to talk with you. So you can go over to my website, calebarnesfitness.com for more information if you like. And also guys, you can check out my YouTube channel, Kayla Barnes Fitness, and you can get this week's Monday and Wednesday workout. I'm gonna put this one up there also. So you're gonna get that as well. So go over to my website, um, subscribe to my email list so that you'll never miss a social media post again in case uh, you know the world and Facebook shuts down again. So, all right guys, I hope you have a wonderful Saturday. Know that I love you so much and I'm so proud of you. And I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and I will see you Monday. Bye.